नमस्कार थैंक यू भाभी जी फॉर सच मिग्नैनिमस इंट्रोडक्शन आई वुड लाइक टू विश ऑल ऑफ यू ऑन दिस ग्रेट इंडिपेंडेंस डे सो लेट मी फर्स्ट बिगिन विथ थ्री वर्ड जय हिंद वंदे मातरम एंड भारत माता की जय वेन आई से जय हिंद वंदे मातरम और भारत माता की जय माइंड इज नॉट वन पोलिटिकल स्लोगन आई से इट ओनली बिकॉज आई हैव एक्सपीरियंसड इट लाइक दैट इफ यू लुक एट माई एंटायर करियर माई वॉट एवर आई सेम ऑल माई स्पीचेस I always speak ex tempo and it's a deliberate plan it's my strategy I speak ex tempo because when you speak ex tempo you speak from your heart and when you speak from your heart you don't have to think because when your mind starts thinking it starts manipulating it starts uh, playing to the gallery but i decided when i started my public speaking career to speak straight from my heart because i don't have to remember anything and only truth comes out of my mind truth the way i have seen it the way i have experienced it and felt it so as far as india is concerned this great land of bharat muni the great bharat varsh i have actually experienced the greatness of india which i'll share it with you but before that i want to share a little past of mine why it took me so long almost half a century to experience the greatness of india those who do not know let me just inform you that <clears throat> I was born into a family of freedom fighters both my mother and father were freedom fighters till their last breath they wore khadi my mother got married when she was 14 or 15 years old in those times girls used to get married early in villages and immediately after her marriage she was within 3 months she was in jail because my father was a freedom fighter and she joined him and she was also thrown into jail the reason i am telling you this is to emphasize that i come from a background where nationalism love for the country was supreme on top of that my father was one of the greatest sanskrit scholars he translated all the vedas the entire kalidas and he was a very celebrated scholar of indian history and indian values and indian philosophy I also grew up in an environment where some of the greatest nationalist people used to come day and night including Ramdhari Singh Dinkar and some of the best minds of those times but despite that despite such strong background I hated everything about my background I hated this country I hated the society I hated the history of India and somehow I wanted India to become like Europe Our my aspirations were to somehow get out of this country to somehow you know get rid of all this I never believed in the history which was taught to me by my parents the greatness of our heritage and like anybody else i also joined the race of capitalism went to us it was in america when i went to harvard i started going to the library and i got to read some books which were not written by indians and slowly i got interested because i learned i picked up a book called on natya shastra 
and it was fascinating i said i come from a country where such great text was written and that slowly got me interested in the old scriptures and texts anyway to cut it short the thing i want to tell you is that like most of the youngsters of my generation their minds were corrupted in their schools and colleges because we were taught wrong history we were taught a history which was manufactured created only to appease a certain section of the society certain political agendas and it was never the truth for example today in the morning somebody wrote that the thanks to moguls who brought the kite flying to india i believed in those kind of things but the, that's wrong it's not fact fact is kite fly, kite flying is mentioned at least 5 7 8 hundred years before the moguls even heard the name india in their lifetime it was about 10 15 years ago i used to be a liberal a leftist a secular a typical model you can see in most of the latians delhi and you can see in breech candy bandra and most of the indian cities now since i went to jnu so i also believed in all the communist things and i hated indian gods and goddesses and never understood the importance and the meaning of that it's only 10 15 years ago i got an opportunity in fact something happened and i decided to teach and it gave me an opportunity to travel all across india and maybe ma saraswati blessed me since then for last 15 days i've been traveling almost 20 25 days in a month not in corona uh not during corona but otherwise i was traveling 20 25 days in a month traveling to different cities towns villages everywhere and when i started talking to common people people who have no political agenda actually the people who run this country people who have held this country together some starting facts i started learning and that transformed me as you can read in my book urban axles it's a it's my journey all across india as i traveled and i discovered rediscovered india and since then i have been so proud that if i have to take birth as many times as i can i would want to be born here and i am going to tell you in detail why first thing i want to tell you is that india is the only country in the history of humanity which was ruled for 1000 years or enslaved for 1000 approximately 1000 years by the minorities it's very important you have to understand this for 1000 years we were ruled by the minorities first 800 years by the uh, islamic tyrants and then next 200 year by christian tyrants now the in the history of this colo colonial invasions or the mughal invasions or the chinese invasions wherever these invaders went those countries change their official religion to the religion of the invaders so you will see in africa wherever the <coughs> british people went those countries became christian in fact some countries they landed within 2 hours the kings or the presidents they converted to christianity the entire societies be it australia be it america they changed their faith to christianity their native faith was in christianity and similarly wherever islamic people went in last 7 800 years 1000 years at the most 
all those countries turned Islamic as recently as Indonesia, Malaysia. India or Bharat was the only society in the history of humanity that when they left us after thousand years, only 11 or 12 percent people were non-Hindus. Most of the country, almost 90 percent of the country remained intact. It is a very important concept to understand. Why did it happen? It happened because of our spirituality. The spirituality of Hindus, and I'm saying Hindus, anybody who lives here on this geographical land or who's part of this united culture, the spirituality of Hindus liberated their mind and that gave them a perspective about the world and the universe, which gave them so much of confidence that we naturally became secular and liberal. We accepted the diversity. We don't have to teach any child why diversity is important. Like in America, I was recently there or especially in Europe also now. There's so much of emphasis on liberalism and diversity, liberalism and diversity, because those, those are oppressed societies. Before Mughals came in, we were never an oppressive society, never ever. If somebody can show me any text, even one line which mentions that we had oppression in this country, I can challenge that person. And this is the reason because it's in our DNA that we accepted these people and there was no need for us to change to any of this thing. But despite that, if you are a joint family of even 25, 30 people, one person, one outsider who comes with the intention to create nuisance in your family can disturb the peace and harmony of the entire family. And after independence, though independence was got after partition and party, partition was on the basis of two nation theory was based on purely on religious grounds. There was no other ground. There was no other reason. It was purely on the religious grounds. Despite that, very strategically, very tactfully, some nuisance was left behind so that India cannot grow and become more powerful. And it's been 70 years that India has remained a bit disturbed on the communal grounds, on religious grounds. I'll explore that a little later. So first thing I want to emphasize that our great heritage, when we talk about heritage, what is this heritage? This heritage, number one is, it's in our DNA, it's our race, which is spiritual in nature. Spiritual in nature means that we have this constant dialogue going on. What is spirituality if not a constant dialogue be between Purush and Prakriti? Because we believe only when Purush and Prakriti, Purush means karma, Prakriti means the universe, mother nature. It's only when there is a constant dialogue between these two, you find oneness. Only in that oneness, there is enlightenment and moksha. At least that's what Patanjali's yoga says. That's what Patanjali wrote thousands of years ago. And it's ingrained in our nature. And which is why wherever you go in the world, wherever you go in the world, whichever part, doesn't matter, you'll find some Indians there. And you will find that the general perception about Indians is that these people can be trusted. All of you sitting here live in England and you must have noticed that people trust you very easily unless somebody is totally ignorant and confuses you with someone else. This spirituality gave us this very important trait of trust. 
I have lived abroad and I have seen, I am telling you from experience, that people have given me rides without even thinking twice because they could trust. And everybody I speak to, they say Indians can be trusted. Why, why can we be trusted? We can be trusted because when the entire West was invading, crusading and conquering the geographical lands of the world, the geographical continents of the world, physical continents of the world, we were conquering our own minds. And which is why we were always intellectually and spiritually more evolved than rest of the world. A lot of people say that Mughals came here, they became one of us and that's why they are great people because they always wanted to live here and they became brothers and all that. No, credit doesn't go to them, credit goes to us. It's like I come to your house, I come and start living there and then you make me one of your family members. But despite that, imagine despite that, thousands and thousands of streets are named after Mughal people, cities after cities are named after them. Thousands of temples have been broken, destroyed. I've seen with my eyes. It's so painful to see greatest of the buildings, palaces. They have been destroyed. And mosques have been built. We have dedicated history books to them. Presidents, chief justices, all the top positions you will find. All the times, IS officers, vice chancellors come from the minority wing, despite that, they always remain unhappy and dissatisfied. Whose greatness is that? Thousands of cities are changed in their name, villages have been changed, Prayagraj becomes Allahabad, and we were not even bothered. One of the most important cities in a uh, street in Delhi, in the capital, is called Aurang, was called Aurangzeb Road. Nobody cared. It's only when the new government came, they changed the name. The point I'm trying to make is that because we were spiritual, we developed this great trait of trust. And this great trust, because we believe that the world is a family, Vasudev Kutumkam. We were the first people to understand that all, everybody is part of a whole. And this is the reason that the first of our Upanishad say, Tattvam Asi. Tattvam Asi means thou art that, means you are that. You are as powerful as the whole cosmic energy. You as a unit of this great universe, you have the same energy as the universe. So when you believe in yourself, when you have self-belief, you find God. And what is God? God is nothing but self-actualization, actualizing the purpose of your life. And to actualize yourself, you don't need education, money, and there is no materialistic abundance is required. And which is why you will find very naturally, look at your parents, your mother, your father, your uncles, your grandparents. Even if you invite them to uh, London, if they come and stay with you, they hardly need anything. Their needs are minimal. They are naturally detached people. In fact, they find maximum happiness in looking after your children, their own grandchildren. Or whenever your friends come to your house, your mothers and mother will always be cooking throughout the day. They find so much of happiness and satisfaction in service. It's a natural DNA. So let me recap it a little bit for you. 
तो फर्स्ट थिंग आई ब्रॉड द फर्स्ट फंडामेंटल वैल्यू इज स्पिरिचुअलिज्म इफ समबडी इज मेकिंग नोट्स यू कैन मेक नोट्स ऑफ दिस द फर्स्ट वैल्यू बिकॉज नोबडी टॉक्स अबाउट व्हाट आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट पीपल जनरली टॉक अबाउट अदर थिंग्स एंड आई एम सेइंग इट बिकॉज माय नॉलेज माय अंडरस्टैंडिंग इज कमिंग फ्रॉम द सोइल ऑफ इंडिया आफ्टर ट्रैवलिंग विलेज टू विलेज हट्स टू हट्स बंगलोस टू बंगलोस आई हैव सीन ऑल अक्रॉस सो स्पिरिचुअलिज्म इज द मेन थिंग which is why despite being such a dirty city such a chaotic crowded city if you go to some cities like banaras or you go to um uh you go to hampi or you go to nashik you will find kind of a divine vibes around you so spiritualism second when i said trust the third thing i told you is service and the fourth most important thing is believing in ourselves now last but not the least if you look at all the texts right from day one i am not getting into what we believe in i am saying what the whole world believes in the first text since then it is written in the first text which is now very abused by the communist and the leftist and the western scholars but despite that a great piece of constitutional social laws how social laws should be manusmriti manusmriti says when a king does not treat every citizen equally and above him when the king does not put these rights and the welfare of the citizens above his own interest that king should be punished and beaten and killed like a mad dog we are the only society where you find a text like this recently i was doing lot of research on democracy democracy now is by the west wrongly credited to greece actually socrates was against democracy that's why he was poisoned he was killed by giving him poison because he uttered against democratic uh, the uh, aristocratic kind of democracy we had the real democracy that's how the concept of ram rajy came the concept of ram rajy is not that everybody is happy the concept of ram rajy is where the king puts everybody's interest above his own interest and even the smallest uh, smallest unit he should listen to that person this is democracy Yes our democracy is not like the western democracy because we treated the family as the single most important unit of our democratic setup then few families together what happens in a family look at it let's let's understand the family system of india you must have noticed anybody who has migrated from india there is a family and lots of people live there your aunts son comes your cousin comes your tauji comes your chacha ji comes everybody starts living together if you live in a big city then your cousins and everybody come from small places they also live with you and all of them start for higher education or jobs they are living with you if somebody is coming to your city you say no no you don't have to stay in the hotel you come and stay with us and we go and sleep on the floor and we give the bed to them we give them the best what we have in that family family there is one or maximum two earning members and they earn and four five children they study they become engineers doctors go to london new york and america and australia everywhere where is in the west if you say they say if you are 18 go and earn on your own here nobody questions if the child doesn't want to spend money wants to depend on his parents can depend for his entire life nobody is going to say anything and in return children then they work for 
parents so it's a economic cycle if you see it's a economic social cycle and that is the reason a lot of people say in india why don't people go to psychiatrists that's the reason we don't go we have the best psychiatrists in our home our parents and our relatives they are like shock absorbers of all the stress and anxiety they work as emotional psychological absorbers that's why i don't get carried away by these hyped up foreign concepts and within the same family and unit and the village panchayat system you will find the importance of women was so much don't go by last 800 years history where women were tortured and not treated well don't go by the caste system of last 800000 years look at the original history the original texts women always had a special a very very special place in every yagya there is no yagya which was done where the woman was not at the center sitting equally to the man in fact she was given the better side you look at all the gods and all the deities of indian hindu uh, the belief and all the goddesses be it durga be it uh, lakshmi be it saraswati all of them find special place in fact i always say the if you ask somebody tell me the traits of brahma vishnu mahesh you will glorify them oh mind blowing shiva was a yogi adi yogi and the great philosophy yes vishnu this and Bra but in real day to day life what do you what do you use you use traits of durga of kali the power your fighting spirit always fighting for your right you use lakshmi everything revolves around money economy how to manage it and saraswati vidya without vidya is not education vidya is not knowledge vidya is wisdom what to do with the knowledge and education and life experiences how to understand the nuances of life like music all these things put together and your life your any single day any one day of your life cannot be complete without lakshmi durga and saraswati and why these concepts were given lot of people say these are metaphorical why these metaphors were given i'll tell you why so that you respect your mother we call dharti ma any thing which gives something dadati it's in sanskrit it's called dadati somebody who gives and not just gives gives to so bank also gives you loan bank is not called ma unconditional giving that unconditional giving is called ma anybody who gives you unconditionally has a status of a ma which is why dharti ma because the earth gives you food the grains without putting any condition on you your own mother ma and the cow cow gives you unconditionally and similarly you will find whenever somebody gives unconditionally in our society is considered to be the mother and now i know it's a half an hour slot i can go on and on it's like a life journey but still so we saw how spirituality led us to trust and why i am telling you these things that today what the west is learning what the west is fighting for equality and racism problems which are going right now in america and europe we don't have a race problem we have we never had a racism problem in our country and before the mughals arrived and started breaking the country and started putting regressive and the repressive values in our society we never had a caste issue you won't find stories of women's oppression name one so trust spirituality trust sub uh, uh, service 
and tattva masi which is thou art that which means you have the entire energy that confidence and when you look at our mothers they symbolize one of the greatest qualities which makes this world go and today if there is a problem in this world of corona it is because the world has abandoned in their lust and their greed for materialistic abundance and globalization what they have given up one greatest quality and that is sacrifice which our mothers symbolize so these are the greatest of the values if you look at your mother you will find your mother wears the least expensive clothes she is always willing to give you just think close your eyes and think the kind of sacrifice your mother has made to raise you up and to make you whatever you are today just her sacrifice you will be overwhelmed you will have tears in your eyes just thinking about your mother in which other society all of you are well traveled people in which other society you have seen this kind of relationship so this is what i have experienced and i have learned are the great values of india but unfortunately because of the communists because of the communal islamic terrorist forces because of the communist red terror forces because of the colonial mindset of congress like me most of the children in this country have grown up feeling inferior to something i don't know what and we end up spending 10 15 years of our youth just fighting the colonial mindset we keep fighting the english language we keep fighting the elitism and we want to become like the west and this is where the new generation has biggest of the problems and this is where the enemies of india and these forces who don't want to india to become one of the greatest countries and vishwa guru these red terror forces and islamic terror forces who have collaborated and have become one they are they have waged a civilizational war against india because when all the civilizations of the world have perished every single civilization has died we are the only civilization which is alive and breathing and growing and hoping to become the vishwa guru and before i conclude i think half an hour was the time given to me i just want to request all of you that we are going through a very critical time this corona crisis is a very big sign i i am a very staunch hindu i believe in hindu philosophy hindu thought the great works please tell them please tell them that the cities where they live all the urban planning urban design they know of was actually invented in india please tell them that all the sanitation all the wc they use they were invented in india perhaps they don't know all these things and that's why they don't take india very seriously all the music they know the musicology was invented in kashmir in india the grammar the modern grammar which you know today was invented in india by panini the surgery which you know was invented in india metallurgy which they know was invented in india these are historical facts if all some of you want i can send you the original text recognized by all the greatest of the researchers and the scientists in the world all the hollywood movies which you see and enjoy and all the opera and the broadway shows which you see was actually invented in india in natya shastra how to do makeup how to make hair how to do stage lighting how the stage should be made what is character all that was created in india the greatest literature was written by kalidas not shakespeare in fact shakespeare also believed that kalidas was the greatest poet and writer in the world the oldest city in the world is in india 
the entire sex education we talk about was invented in India. Yeah, I can go on and on and on and on. Please tell your children and your grandchildren that the Silicon Valley which they talk about today of the second millennium, actually India was the Silicon Valley of the first millennium. And which is why we were invaded and looted. Nobody invades and loot a poor village. Have you ever seen a thief going and looting and invading a poor person's cottage? No. You invade rich people. We were rich in knowledge. That's why people came here and looted us. Our biggest mistake was that we were simple people. We were sacrificing people. While the world was making guns and swords, we were sharpening our minds and our spirits and understanding what is beyond life, what is this universe is all about and which is why we are the inventors of astronomy and all the knowledge about the cosmos. Which is why we invented numbers, all the numbers you read, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, which later on Arabs stole from us and they became Indo-Arabic method of counting including zero which changed the world and just to conclude this this whole principle of Tattva Masi thou art that and Shiva's cosmic dance the Tandav Ratte of Shiva what does it say the cosmic dance of Shiva says when Shiva is there he is not there when he is not there he is actually there so when he is static he is dynamic when he is dynamic he is static now Thousands of years later, the Western science discovered the same thing which is called quantum physics now. The quantum physics says exactly the same thing that the particle, the atom, it is dynamic and static both. <clears throat> when it is there, it is not there. And when it's not there, it is there. Same concept, same thing, exactly detail. We believe that the that the, uh, the atom, kan, kan jisam kehte hai Bhagwan, actually in the smallest particle has exactly the same amount of energy which is in the universe. Quantum physics also says the same thing, that the particle has the same energy as the cosmic energy. And no wonder in Switzerland outside the CERN, which is the world's apex research institute for quantum physics, there is a big... Shiva's statue of, of his dancing, of his cosmic dance, of his Tandrav Natya. When you enter, I have gone there, the biggest of is of Shiva Tandrav Natya. Unfortunately, our own children don't know about it because nobody teaches them. So tell your children that you come from a place which was the Silicon Valley. We got looted and invaded because... We did not protect it. We didn't know how to protect it. But today we have to learn to protect it. There is a huge cyber warfare is going against India. A big media warfare, intellectual warfare is going. Like they in design manner are trying to convert people by faith, by religion. Today they are trying to convert our new children, our children and new generations ideologically. They have put a doubt in their minds. Which is why our children have started questioning our own heritage, our own history, our own strength, our own power. We have to fight it. I'll tell you how we can fight it because I'm not here only to raise questions. I also want to give some solution how to fight this global cyber warfare against India or intellectual warfare against India by the people I call urban nexus. I am a great believer of the energy of the universe, the vibes of the universe. Today the universe is flooded with the negativity about India. If you go to YouTube or if you go to Netflix and all and you type Islam or you type Christianity, you will find thousands of things on Jesus Christ, how he was a messenger of love and peace and on Islam, how their calligraphy is great and blah, 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 blah. But when it comes to Hinduism, you'll find that we are a caste-based society. Our gods, monkey dogs and the elephant dogs and we believe in superstition. Go to YouTube and check and that's what you'll find mostly. All the Western texts, 
in universities and in institutes research places you will find this we can correct it it's in your hands and my hands i am doing it last 10 years i have invested in only writing and creating products which highlight the greatness of india i am not focusing on the weaknesses if you see in last half an hour i have only told you about the greatness of this great civilization do not take a pledge on this 15th august take a oath make a commitment to yourself that for next one year 365 days of your life you will not sleep even one day until you have written something great about india on social media it's a very easy simple thing to do it will take you 5 10 minutes and you don't have to be a researcher write something about your own city your own village about your childhood the greatness like i told you about the greatness of mothers write about the greatness of your mother her about her sacrifice fill this universe with the greatness of india because algorithm is the new global god they write so much of negative things about india yesterday i did a show and we were talking about why wikipedia is hindu phobic when it you go and check in on uh, wikipedia just now jai shri ram they say it's a war cry which is being used by bharti janata party and uh, uh, nationalist hindu wings to communalize people and to oppress and torture the minorities that's what the wikipedia says jai shri ram and if you write allah akbar it says oh this is in sung in love for god and blah 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 all great things why because they are the so they are the fastest growing religion in the world all the money is with them all the guns and the power is with them the entire world is here to appease them and which is why if you say any one word against islam even you question academically you are labeled islamophobic but if you say that wikipedia is like that nobody says that wikipedia is hindu phobic i am raising voice against it i am filling the universe from my own side as much about the greatness of india and which is why before i conclude today on my channel vra tv on youtube tonight at 7 pm indian standard time i am doing a big revelation that what was the real story of independence why did we get freedom on 15th august 1947 i have found documents from the prime minister mr lord clement atley from uh, you uh, from uk from birmingham palace from indian army indian navy and i am revealing what is the real story of india's independence you can show it to your children so that you will understand that we have been lied upon that we got the freedom because of gandhi ji's non violent movement that's pure rubbish absolute lie the saddest part is that our own people our own government after independence was lying to us making fool out of us and they poison our minds where we do not believe in ourselves so take this oath with me that for next 365 days every single night before sleeping you'll write something good something whatever you want if nothing else write about your sari write about some food fill the universe i want to thank all of you for inviting me wonderful vibes otherwise i don't feel so overwhelmed to talk so emotionally i'm sorry that i got bit emotional about the whole thing you are lovely people wonderful people i wish reach all the best and may ma saraswati really really bless you so much that you take the great wisdom and knowledge of india and you throw this shine on the western world which is under conflict today so that they understand our values and they destroy or they eradicate all this racism inequality and the fake concepts of democracy from their societies thank you once again jai hind vande mataram bharat mata ki jai hind vande mataram